Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. A while back I did a video on identifying a defective Magnavox motor. And uh, I wanted to thank one of my viewers for sending this to me. He's, he knows who he is. Uh, but we're going to do a dissection on these and see if we can come across anything that's obviously different about the two. Now I've indicated on here bad motor versus good motor. And I've marked all the bodies and everything so that I know I don't get anything mixed up in the process of doing this video. But we're just going to pull them apart and we're going to check each one and see how it differs. Okay, so at a, a part, at first glance, it really doesn't look any different. The windings on both are about the same color. There's no excess burning or charring of anything. Smell wise they seem okay. It's the same size rotor and same size magnet on it. Doesn't anything, uh, nothing stands out as being strange. They both look the same. Both have the same spin down time roughly. Bearings are just as clean however the defective one never comes up to speed and makes that horrible noise. So what's going on here? Well my theory behind this is that the shaded pole magnets that are, and the ceramic magnet on the back of the rotor here lose their magnetism. Now if I increase the electromagnetic field by raising the voltage here I can get this one to run at the right speed. However then this gets incredibly hot from being over voltaged and it will eventually burn up. Now people have also asked me well why don't you like make some sort of phasing capacitor or something that works. Well that would be difficult to do on this because the accessibility of the windings is limited so it's not really practical. Now on the motor that's good I notice that that looks dirtier and the coppery is kind of faded and but the looks really don't matter here the fact of the matter is is that this one works and this one does not. Now I don't have a magnetometer so I can't really judge Gaussian intensity between these two magnets but what I do have is this little EMF meter. Now this checks for electromagnetic fields in the 60 cycle domain range and above and it's a pretty cool little thing. We're going to see if I can get any difference in registration between this magnet and this magnet and maybe that will better explain what the threshold is of failure and what the differences are in magnetic strength to make one work and one not. So let's see if we can test the uh, bad one first. Okay so what I'm going to do here is turn on the EMF meter and I've got the rotor up against the sensor which is on the side of the unit and we're going to track the maximum intensity that we get by rotating this last time I did this it maxed out at about 50. And apparently this one's maxing out at up oh, there we go we're up to 80. Not much more than that. 88 if I spin it faster. Okay well anyways 88.4 so let's remember that number and now let's do the other one. Alright so I've got it reset and let's go ahead and do the strong one. Wow that one jumps up there quite a bit. Let's see what happens when we spin it faster. 141. Okay so it's out of range now. So obviously that kind of confirms it. Is that the magnets in this are much stronger than the dead one over there. Now what's even more interesting is let's see if the electromagnetic field generated by the two field coils are any different. And so I'm going to get a cheater cord and hook these up. We'll only do this test briefly because without the rotor in there those coils are going to get really hot really fast. 
So let's figure out uh, if the electromagnetic field is any different based on the two different field coils. All right, so I've got the bad motor field coil hooked up to a cheater cord, and I'm going to flip the switch, and we're sitting about two inches away from the unit, and we're going to measure the maximum field strength generated by this. So here we go. I'm going to turn on the switch now. So there's 772. 73, 74, seems to be leveling out. And when I remove the power, it, the field goes away, obviously. So now, let's hook up the other one and see if there's any difference. Okay, so we've got our unit reset now with the good field coil. And remember the old number 777. We've got it at the uh, two inch distance and here we go a little bit stronger but not much probably not meaningful so there's your interesting scientific experiment for the day so it appears I had to spin this fairly aggressively to get it to generate the uh, numbers that we got on the EMF meter. This one I didn't have to spin nearly as fast. So that tends to prove that the rotor assembly in this has really lost its magnetism. Now it's not known whether that's entirely the shaded pull piece here or whether it's the ceramic here. You'd have to disassemble this further. It's all glued together right now and this would probably splinter if I tried to take it apart. But that's really what's happening is that the poor rotors in these things are losing their magnetism and you can make them spin at the right speed by increasing the electromagnetic field from the field coil but uh, shortening its life uh, significantly so until there's a way to re-energize these uh, it's going to be looking for a parts unit to salvage a motor from uh, or maybe in the future if we can figure out a way to mount something better there getting a motor from like a dual 12 series like a 1209 1229 etc those motors don't seem to suffer this failure uh, I don't know if it's materials related or uh, just that the charge wasn't big enough to begin with and just dwindles down over time or another thought is the motor seizes and it's stuck there for some time in the on position because it hasn't completed the cycle and are the field coils slowly demagnetizing the rotor or is it a time thing well actually I don't know if it's a time thing because I've literally bought brand new old stock motors that have been sitting in a box for decades and they too have the symptom of the doesn't hold speed wavering wow and flutter uh, signs of motor death so uh, that's what's happening. Loss of magnetism doesn't come up to speed. Loss of torque. The good motor, as you saw, puts out a hell of a lot bigger magnetic field from the rotor than the other one does, holding it at the same position. Less effort, too. So, uh, no obvious signs. Field coils look the same color. Everything else is cool. It's just loss of magnetism. So if anyone can figure on a way to re-energize one of these motors so that it works correctly, I'd be glad to hear about it. Or maybe I'll come up with some experimentation myself at a later date. But for right now, this is what it is. Magnavox owners, beware. Listen for the horrid sound, and I would probably try to buy another changer right about now just so that you have a chance at a better motor. Although, you wonder if the motor that you buy is going to be good or bad. I got lucky. The person that sold this to me, knew what it sounded like, it knew that it was working correctly per my other video, and was very reasonable. So again, thanks to that YouTube viewer, you know who you are. Uh, if you want to speak up, great. If not, your thanks is huge, and your efforts are much appreciated. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, more interesting stuff to come soon.